Okay, so welcome back to our YouTube Sabbath School lesson study. We are studying this new quarter, or we started this new quarter, and it's with the topic of In the Crucible with Christ. And that's a difficult place to be. But this quarter we're going to be studying different aspects of, of going through difficult times, but not alone, with Jesus. And Peter, would you lead us in prayer as we begin? Let's pray. Generally, Father, we thank you for all the blessings you bestowed on us for the mm. the week that you gave us for the light and mm. this nature and all the things we woke up to this morning. Mm -hmm. We just thank you for those blessings and we realize that all of those come from you. Amen. And so we want to thank you for that. And as we get into this lesson study, some of the topics might not be easy but mm -hmm. we ask that you'd send your spirit to be with us here to guide us in our lesson study in jesus name amen amen so crucible um again it's not something you think about all the time no um in fact i was uh i was either today or yesterday i was looking on amazon i was i typed in the word crucible i was like i'm gonna check this out I was like 150 bucks for a cheap one. Oh, but wow. basically, it's a kit. So you would attach your propane tank to this kind of, I think it's some type of concrete device or something. So you can pump the heat in really high. And you could take like aluminum uh, cans. Like if you went and picked up some on the side of the road, you could take them in there, all their dirtiness and whatever. And it would take that aluminum and melt it down into these little, little discs. Wow. I was thinking that would be fun. I don't know if we'll have a demonstration by the end of this time. That might be too technical. But uh, I just thought that was interesting because we don't think about that. And, you know, last week's lesson was Psalms 23. Correct. So kind of a pic painted picture of our journey. Yes. But this week, what's this week here? This is kind of breaking up versions of the crucible. Correct. And it points to some text found in first peter okay chapter 4 verse 12 and 13 which is our memory text oh can Maybe i read can, that yes yeah, go for all it. right so this is new king james version uh it says oh sorry first peter 4 and 12 and 13 so i'm gonna mm -hmm. put that on the screen here uh, beloved do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you mm. as though some strange thing happened to you but rejoice to the extent that you partake of christ's sufferings that when his glory is revealed you may also be glad with exceeding joy amen so you know we have this crucible if you go to the dictionary you're going to find probably two def definitions but one is kind of a, a vessel or something mm -hmm. used for melting a uh, substance that and it requires a high degree of heat that's kind of a revised standard version yes. of the de definition and then uh there's another one a severe test mm -hmm. and i guess there's a third one i missed that here um it's a place or situation in which concentrated forces interact to cause or influence uh change or development so i feel like every single one of those definitions you can mm -hmm. spiritualize you can you can <laughs> right yes because uh you think about the refiner's fire mm -hmm. you think of severe tests i mean we have those every year and sometimes it feels like every week yes <laughs> various little things they're micro things in the big scheme of things if i look back a month from ago and there was a crazy test it was horrendous for like a day or two mm -hmm. but now i don't think about it too much um and then a place or situation in which concentrated forces interact to cause or influence change or development so <laughs> what our lives our lives and and i think as as you mentioned you know these are these are tests which mean we have to make a decision and as we go through these challenges there are things that we want to keep but other things we want to get rid of that we recognize we don't need this this is just an obstacle on the path upon I'm walking and so it's again a, a reminder of, of a, what is important okay so what are the causes of 
difficult times mm. that we experience. What could be a cause? A cause could be something as 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 basic as um, going through hardship because of my faith. Oh, and okay. this could be at work, something that challenges me at work, where I I have my belief in God and I have these principles and because of that I can't go along with what's happening at work. You know, not all of us are in those situations. Mm -hmm. We were blessed by where we work. Maybe it's our employer Correct. or maybe it's just our situation, the country we live in Correct. where there's certain freedoms that mm -hmm. we don't think about until we get to a place that doesn't have those and then we're like, oh. Uh, back to this whole concept of what is causing these difficult things. Let's take it just uh, standard anybody's life. Uh, in the, uh, from a Christian perspective, somebody's life, um, they're dealing with various things. And let's say you get a call one day and a family member has passed away. And that family member was super healthy. And suddenly there was a car accident. And that family member is no more. Or you get that call from your best friend and, or maybe it's at the end of the phone call and they're like, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm dealing with some health challenges. And you realize, mm -hmm. wow, they have cancer. And mm -hmm. you know, they're in their 30s and mm -hmm. I'm in my 30s. And it just, it, even if it's not in a super aggressive form of cancer, it kind of triggers you to think of like, wow, um, like that could happen to me. How would that change my life? Um, but let's go back to this Peter's take. Yes. And, and it looks like Peter is telling Christians, telling the church, telling us that um, walking with God Walking with Jesus does not mean we will not go through trials. Hmm. Okay. In fact, it means that we might go to many trials, many more trials, just like Jesus went through so many trials when he was here okay. on earth. So let's go to uh, 1 Peter okay. again. Um, 1 Peter 4. Four. And again, it's, it's basically dealing with uh, 12 and 13. Um, do you want to read that again? I'll be glad to. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. And maybe just pausing there on verse 12. Yeah. It's normal. Yeah. This is part of life. It will happen, hmm. especially to Christians. So this idea of the crucible it's not for those who don't believe in God, but it's especially for those who believe in God. You know, it, it reminds me of the news cycle. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like no news nowadays is good news. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things like shootings. There's a mm -hmm. lot of things like war, um, mm -hmm. rumor of war. However it is, it's, it's always bad news. A building collapsed, a landslide happened. That's right. um, in Italy, just hmm. a couple days ago, there was that avalanche yes, a uh, glacier. from a glacier. It mm -hmm. basically, it, I saw the video and it looks like, a, a, like an avalanche, mm -hmm. but it, it basically breaks off and goes down the hill and multiple people killed, multiple people hospitalized. Um, and so it, it's, it's hard to see all these things happen and um, there, there's a friend uh, of some of my friends, I don't know this person specifically, but they were hiking recently, one of the mountains out west and they didn't come back. Oh, no. And so it's, it's, and it's weird how it affects me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this person. I, I may have met them at like a GYC or, or mm -hmm. some other um, event um, where there's a lot of people because he looks super familiar, but um, it's just watching how my friends are affected and mm -hmm. how un how surprising it is. You know, he's on a road trip and yeah. you don't expect these things to happen. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, the, the lesson talks about this this view that some Christians have. There's this view, of course we know that there's the good and there's the evil. Um, and there's this over, oversimplified look at it, that all the good comes from God and all the evil comes from Satan. And there's two sides, right? Mm -hmm. So we automatically say if something bad happens, that must be... Satan. And if something good happens... It must be God. Um, so how, do, how does that go? Because that's, that's a age-long question that's like, why, why did my kid die? Or why did such and such happen? And I think what, what, what Peter reminds us again is that um, good people suffer. Um, good people go through difficult times. Bad people they seem to be doing well. They seem mm, to be okay. prospering. And in fact, there are several Psalms that, that talk about... Psalm 37? I think so. Yeah, there's a New Living Translation. It says, mm -hmm. Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon shall fade away. Like mm -hmm. spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do Amen. good. And you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord, and trust Him, and He will help you. Amen. So, when we encounter these things, you know, how do we how do we relate to them? So, if I have a family member that passes away, what's that process of getting through uh, the darkness? There are steps, I think, to, to these, these trials where, where at first maybe there's shock. There's unbelief. This can't be happening. This can't be happening to me. And there's also, um, in a sense, uh, you, you, we can even get discouraged. So this is where, again, the Word of God invites us to trust God especially when we're going through those difficult moments. Uh, I know Job in Job 21 verse 7 was mm -hmm. saying, Why do the wicked live on, growing old and increasing in power? Hmm. You know, he asked a lot of poignant questions, just like really good, really hard questions. Okay. It was like this very, very hard dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, but back to 1 Peter 4, Mm -hmm. Four. It's a good passage, but how mm -hmm. could you break it down to like a friend? Maybe a friend who isn't a believer. You know that there's good things happening to bad people and bad things happening to good people. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a text I, I, would, I, would, I would probably not use it in that context when somebody's going through a difficult time. Yeah. Because the next <laughs> verse basically tells us sure. to rejoice. You know, to the yeah. extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. So this probably won't be the one I would... This um, is more of the edification when you're talking about life and philosophy and different things like that. Correct. And, and it seems that he's using it also in this context of, of if we are going to suffer, which we all will, everyone... Let's suffer for what is good, hmm. for doing good things. Yeah. And, and even if people criticize us, even if we lose our job, even if family members get upset of it, at us because we're doing the right thing according to God's word, um, you know, hold on, don't give up. And there's, there's this verse that, that comes in verse 14 and 15, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed. But on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a murder, I'm sorry, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. So basically what it's saying is don't suffer for what everyone else would suffer for. Correct. 
But suffer for a noble cause. For a noble cause. Hmm. And that's worth, worth it. Just like Jesus. So, do you think I should read this quote that I was talking about earlier? Okay. Okay. So, this is something I think I heard in high school. But I went back and I found some more aspects of it. It's from the book Heavenly Places. And this is Ellen White speaking. She said, If I should look at the dark clouds, the troubles, and perplexities that come to me in my work, hmm. I should not have time to do anything else. But I know that there is light and glory beyond the clouds. By faith I reach through the darkness to the glory. At times I am called to pass through financial perplexities, but I do not worry about money. Hmm. God takes care of my affairs. I do all that I can, and when the Lord sees that it is best for me to have money, He sends it to me. Amen. Um, so that's part one of this. And part two is the more you talk faith, the more faith you will have. Amen. The more you dwell upon discouragement, talking to others about your trials and enlarging upon them to enlist the sympathy which you crave, the more discouragements and trials you will have. Why mourn over that which we cannot avoid? God is inviting us to close the windows of the soul earthward and open them heavenward. Amen. That he may flood our hearts with the glory which is shining across the threshold of heaven. I like this quote, this, this quote that you shared with us because it, it's an invitation really that in these difficult times, these challenges that we face, we don't have to face them alone. Hmm. And I think as human beings, we tend to want to face these things by ourselves. It's natural to kind of hide, to kind of just um, close in and, 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 and kind of suffer in silence or even mm. openly but with no one around yeah um and and it's an invitation to at that moment where we don't know why this is going on why this is happening to me or to a loved one to look up and ask god god i really don't understand why this is happening but i trust you i i believe in you i know you're real i know you will bring us through this difficult time and, and, and it's an opportunity, I, I would say, for us to, to um, in some ways, test God hmm. and, and ask God, what's the plan? How do we move forward together? Because I can't by myself. So when a surprise hits you, whether it's the mm. death of a family member, a financial mm -hmm. crisis, mm -hmm. your job, something mm -hmm. like that, how do you reach out without dwelling upon discouragement? and mm -hmm. talking or complaining about your trials mm -hmm. like how do you reach out because some of this stuff is a little too hard to bear alone it is it, it is and, and maybe maybe sharing is not a bad thing it's, you know what, what we're feeling what we're going through at the moment especially if it's someone we know well who cares about us it's important um, and two maybe trying to focus on you know next steps also so it's easier for us to dwell in what happened in the past but the question really is okay how do we move forward and and, and do it in a way that is honorable that is um, constructive that is somehow um, helpful to those mm -hmm. who are around us or to the person also that that is going through this difficult time and so somehow I, I what i see the bible do time and time again says hey yes we're in this situation but there's something better and, and that's that's what i see the bible doing constantly pointing us to something better okay so kind of shifting our focus mm -hmm. to first peter 5 we were okay. in first peter 4 that's right um we kind of move along because there's these these surprising crucibles mm -hmm. but then there's the crucibles of satan mm. so if you want to start in first peter 5 verse 8 okay and then we'll kind of start moving through that topic mm -hmm. and so verse 8 says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour have you ever seen a hungry lion I've seen a lion in a zoo. That's as close as I've gotten to a lion. I feel like the only hungry lions I've seen are like on National Geographic yes. or 
in a in a magazine or something like that. But um, there's something keen and very beady about their eyes, even at the zoo. Like there's that kind of eye that just is piercing. If they're staring at you, you kind of feel it. You feel it. You know that they I mean, are watching. <laughs> you're super glad there's like that much glass in between you, or a fence or a moat or something like that. But it's it's like. No, okay, I can't deal with this. Yes. So, if we were dealing with this as a visible lion, do you know how many precautions we would take? I don't know what we would carry with us to mm-hmm. fend it off, whether a sword or whatever you're going to use, mm-hmm. but you know, going from your door to, and you'd have cameras set up so that you know. And there'd be motion sensors, and and you'd always be vigilant. So this is that's, but this is all invisible. This Correct. is not a physical situation. So how seriously can I take these words? And you know, what things in our life would show that we take something like this seriously? Like w- what are mm-hmm. what are the non what's a non-physical response to dealing like a what's a spiritual response to dealing with a text like this i would say prayer is 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 basic especially when you are in the situation you can be praying to god at that moment um and and asking god for help to know what to do what to say what not to say and and something about god's holy spirit is that it does give confidence and it also gives peace and many times we need that peace in order to know what to do next so in verse 9 mm-hmm. it says resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world mm-hmm. does that mean that the same things I'm experiencing here are felt by somebody one of my brothers in Thailand, or That's a right. sister in That's Italy, right. That's right. or a friend in Lebanon, yes. you know? Um, and I think this is where, you know, some type of prayer circle or prayer buddy system is helpful too. It is. Because, you know, especially if you're alone by yourself, I don't know where you're watching, you could be here in Maryland, you could be in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. You could be in the Yukon. Let's, mm-hmm. You could be in Japan. I don't know where you're watching from, but mm-hmm. if you're feeling alone, to find someone to pray with. That's right. Um, if you don't have someone, you can always email the pastor. That's right. <laughs> and we'll, we'll figure out something. Uh, I know, Pastor, you've done some Bible studies via Zoom. I have, <laughs> and I continue <laughs> to do this and I'm sure on a weekly we could basis. Do some type of prayer through Zoom. Mm-hmm. I think our church has a prayer meeting. That's right. Every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Okay. <laughs> yes. And Again, reach out to the pastor if you'd like to be a part of that. But there's that resisting because we're all going through the same crucible. That's right. Different. Everyone has a different level that they're dealing with currently, but we're all going through the same thing. And then verse 10, but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Amen. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. It's an important, I think, just, just ideas in, in, in this text where we're also invited to be vigilant. And I, and I always think again of, of, of vigilant in, in prayer, vigilant in Bible study. So these are basic things that we need um, to go through these challenging times. So for you, what would v- vigilant prayer look like? I know like mm-hmm. in church we have the you know, formal prayers in the morning you know me and my wife you know mm-hmm. pray after reading something um, mm-hmm. you know we pray for the food what other kind of prayers are we what what does a vigilant prayer look like i i am glad you asked because some i think sometimes god even impresses us what to pray for because mm-hmm. we don't know yeah and and so when we we sense this urgency of prayer 
we take the time, we don't let things distract us. And at that moment, God puts upon us names of people we know, mm -hmm. um, situations. Um, he puts on our heart, even, even things that we're dealing with that we haven't taken the time to really pray about. And so we can bring those to Him and sense that somehow He will take care of it. Yeah. It's interesting because I've had that situation where I can't sleep at night. And mm -hmm. so I just am like, well, I guess I just can start praying and see until I fall asleep again. Mm -hmm. yeah, it may or may not be the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes you think of the name and you pray about it and you don't know how that's going to go. But there's like one situation I remember. There, there was a friend um, from back like high school years. And uh, whatever, I knew they were struggling in their faith and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I like, I don't know, I had a burden of them through, through college, I, I think, and I would pray about it and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, over the years, I kind of, you know, forgot about some stuff. But now looking at them, I'm like, wow, they have really changed. And okay. there's something going on. And to me, that's like fantastic because I'm like, that means that like these other friends who are struggling, I could start putting that type of effort into these other friends Amen. and eventually there's going to be some fruit so like to me that was just like an interesting answer to prayer that you kind of forget about like mm -hmm. unfortunately you have your prayer list and it waxes and wanes over the years mm -hmm. and you don't you some people fall off out of your life you don't know too much about them but like to see this person like doing what they're doing with their life I'm like wow to where they are now and to where they were then it's just like night and day and so like I think to wrap this section up mm -hmm. um, I would say that in being vigilant and in praying for others you can have that extra layer of protection Amen. as you're moving Amen. through whether it's the valley of the shadow of death mm. or wherever they're the line mm. whether that's the jungle or the plains you can mm. that extra um, emphasis on prayer will build you up and bring you closer to him thus protecting you amen so and I see yeah. that promise there in verse 10 that you yeah, read yeah. where it talks about you know after you have suffered a while God will perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. And, and we can expect that, that through those moments of difficulties and challenges connected to God, we will grow. And, and I've noticed that time and time again. I'll grow in my relationships, not only to God, but to those around me. Hmm. And especially people who are close to me. If we're going through this time of suffering together there's a bond like we've experienced something together that no one else has at least from our knowledge yeah and and that that just it's it's neat to see how god works things out and when we get to heaven there's mm. going to be that other bond that oh you were going through that too i didn't realize that's that right. as well others, that's right <laughs> you know? so you, you see it and in heaven we'll see a lot of the bigger picture and some Amen. things will just make a lot more sense. Amen. Um, so, kind of moving on to mm -hmm. the next aspect of the, there's talks about crucibles of sin. And okay. So the verse it gave was Romans one eighteen. Mm -hmm. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So the next sentence in the lesson is everything that we do has a consequence. Okay. So a question it also asks is in your life, how have you reaped the immediate consequences of your own sin? It was funny because when I was studying mm -hmm. this, I thought of something immediately. I was pretty young. Um, I think I was in the single digits. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. And I would help my dad out in the woods, clearing the woods. We lived out in the country. And every fall and every spring, we would gather the 
stray sticks that had fallen down from the storms and we'd burn them and everything. Well, we were clearing, clearing out the backyard and um, at that point our driveway was like all gravel and stuff. So we got this together, this nice fire, and we were just burning it in the driveway. And there, were this, there was this pile of um, roofing tar, mm -hmm. uh, roofing tar paper. Yes. That was right next to the house. And um, I think I had seen just a little bit of it catch. And uh, I thought it was kind of a cool glow or something. So I wanted to take some over and I'm carrying it over. My dad says, no, no, don't put it in. Um, it's not good for the fire. I'm like, okay. But it had that kind of cool burn to it. So, like, I just waited till he was, like, on the other side of the house working on something. And I took that piece of tar paper and I threw it in the fire. Hmm. But then it didn't burn as quickly as I hoped it would. I was like, it should catch and go and be taken care of. And then my dad walked around the corner. And he started loading up more, and he realized that there was tar paper in the fire. And he said, did you put the tar paper in there? I was like, I was like go to your room. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, ha I had to deal with some consequences. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, yeah, they were immediate consequences. But later that evening when some friends came over, uh, we look out in the front driveway and the fire was still glowing from the tar paper that hadn't quite and um, it was Kind of glowing and burning for another day or so. Oh, wow. So it just didn't go out when It would have so it's just interesting. That that's just a little illustration that popped up in my mind that mm. Yeah, there's some consequences You know dad knew what would happen if you threw the tar paper in and why he didn't want that burning whether it was the pollutants, extra pollutants in the air, whether it was the fire that kept going. But, you know, that was a pretty immediate consequence that I thought I could skirt as a kid. So that that's a simple thing that comes to mind. I don't know if you have anything more um, advanced or technical. That's a for, great from, illustration. From illustrations. That's a great illustration, which, which I think we've all experienced, myself included. <laughs> where we um, defy, disobey our parents yeah. and the consequences are immediate. Yeah. And one of those that I remember was at a construction site. We were building our first home in okay. Mexico. Okay. And um, they were putting up the walls and these were with um, cinder blocks. Okay. And you had to pour in the cement yeah, yeah. into it. But my parents had said, hey, just don't go close to this, the wall because there's no roof still, you know, there's no, nothing holding those <laughs> walls together. Oh boy. And I thought, okay, it just went in one ear, went out the other. And um, I saw this window or what was going to be a window. There's no, no glass there. It's just the space. And I thought, how cool just to get up there, you know, oh, man, and be so able cool. to see from there the... <laughs> The surrounding and, mm. and so I saw these cinder blocks just right just step up you know to wow. that section and I, I went really up there did. and I'm balancing I thought how cool and I turned around I heard my dad say hey we're leaving and he wasn't anywhere close to where I was so I was like oh let me get down quickly I get down quickly and I just kind of sensed something behind me was moving and it was oh, wow. a chunk of that wall was just coming with those cinder blocks coming down. Oh, no. And I just barely caught it with the edge of my eyes and moved forward, but my foot got stuck in the back. Oh, no. And just went boom, and it hit it really hard. Oh, no. I wanted to scream, but I held the pain and I didn't I just had these like crocodile uh, tears coming out of my eyes and, and I just walked slowly toward where my parents were and they're like are you okay mm -mm -mm. something fell on my foot <laughs> <laughs> no they went over and saw what it fell on my foot mm, part of the wall oh part of the wall that foot was swollen purple we we're supposed to go swimming um, we went swimming, but I couldn't swim with my foot so swollen. So sometimes those consequences are 
immediate. And yes, Satan knows how to tempt us. He knows how to put us in situations that oftentimes then we go like, oh, what do I do now? Will God even accept me? Because mm. it's my fault. Yeah. I was the one who made this decision. And God is there with us through those moments as well. And he's saying, hey, I have the solution. I can forgive. I'm glad my parents said, okay, we'll just ask the construction people to put that wall back up. And, and it did cost them, I'm sure, a little more money. Yeah. Um, thankful to God, I didn't, you know, break anything. Lose a just, foot. Just uh, lose a foot, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but yes. So if, if you have some time this afternoon, mm -hmm. um, you know, look through Romans 1, uh, specifically 21 through 32, uh, the verses 21 through 32. Mm -hmm. Because um, Paul's describing the process of when people fall into sin and mm. the consequences of those sins. And, you know, you can read those verses prayerfully and carefully. And, you know, summarize um, the essence of what Paul is saying. Mm -hmm. You know, just take some time, meditate, pray on that. Because um, that is just something, you know, for your own personal edification. Mm -hmm. um, we all deal with various things. Mm -hmm. um, the sins you struggle with are going to be different than the sins I struggle mm -hmm. with. The sins you struggle with are going to be different than the ones I struggle with. And then there's the ones we all struggle with. So there's just certain things that we need to um, take um, take into account. And um, so Romans 1, 21 through 32. But let's move on here. We just have a few minutes left okay. here. Um, Jeremiah 9 verse 7. Could you read Jeremiah 9 verse 7? Okay, Jeremiah 9 verse 7 says, Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will refine them and try them. For how shall I deal with the daughter of my people? So crucibles of purification. Mm -hmm. What's this about? You know, it, this is a different day in the lessons. Uh, we've, we've talked about surprises, we've talked about crucibles of Satan, uh, we've talked about crucibles of sin, but then there's crucibles of purification. Yes. Um, and there's Jeremiah 9 verse 7. Uh, there was, Oswald Chambers had a quote in uh, one of his books that said, If the Spirit of God brings to your mind a word of the Lord that hurts you, mm. you can be sure that there is something in you that he wants to hurt to the point of its death. Amen. Which is interesting. Amen. Uh, interesting Amen. way to put things. But mm -hmm. I think this comes down to crucifying self. Crucifying self and putting aside anything that separates us from God. And if you're like, what separates me from God? Mm. Well, again, in your prayer time this afternoon when you're mm -hmm. going through that Romans thing, uh, Romans chapter we talked about, just pray about it. Mm -hmm. um, this next week, God could reveal that to you. And I think there's something about just growing and not stagnating in our Christian journey. Um, if everything is going perfectly, there's probably something that is off. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's how it goes. Yeah, right. When everything is, when you feel like you're going through the crucible and everything mm -hmm. is falling down around you, sometimes that's exactly that growing process Amen. that um, God has for you um, and he, he wants you to experience with. So, um, I don't know, is there anything else you wanted to add to this section? I think that this, you, 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 made a, uh, you made it clear that, yes, is it God can also refine us. So, so these trials that we go through, sometimes we ourselves get into it. And, 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 and God uses these opportunities to, again, bring us back to Him, to show us where we need to grow, to show us that also He cares and He can actually do something about it, hmm. even if it's not immediate. So along, many times we have to, you know, wait for a while before we see any results. Yeah. But God invites us to trust Him. And, and it's, it's an opportunity, as, as, as I think Jeremiah 9 clearly um, tells us um, of God's way of saving humanity. If the things we did had no consequences and everything was always great, yeah. there would be no need for change. Mm -hmm. 
But I think is when we hit the wall, boom, when we figure something out, I'm on the wrong path. That's an opportunity, again, for us to open ourselves to God and for God to show us a better way and, and how to move forward. And just remember that trials, the whole crucible thing, mm-hmm. everything is only in this life. Mm-hmm. That's right. So once we get past this, Amen. we don't have to deal with that anymore if we're at forever and ever throughout eternity, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, so whenever you're feeling that discouragement, man, I'm struggling with this, or man, God is really bringing this one area of my life to attention, and but I really love that thing, and I, I'd really much rather spend that time with that. Um, Take, your, take yourself out of that context and put yourself in the bigger picture. I always mm-hmm. say, like, if you're having a really bad day or really discouraged about something, go outside, look into the sky. If it's at night, it's even better because then you can see the stars. Yes, yes. And then you realize that, oh, we're a super small planet, and that mm. massive problem that just is filling the whole entire house or the whole entire office or the whole entire church mm. is not actually a huge problem. And then... I don't know. That's always a, a reset. A button good perspective. For me. Yeah. Yeah, amen. I like it, and, and it's a problem that is definitely not too big for God to solve. Uh, just on the last thing, crucibles of maturity. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the couple things I, I thought of, um, you know, there's Second Corinthians twelve verse seven. Okay. It says, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Uh, that's pretty significant. Mm-hmm. I think we're pretty much out of time, but mm-hmm. the one thing that sticks out to me for that is critique back in college. Okay. Um, in the art department, we would bring our best work. We would show it, and all the work we had been working on for the past who, however long just kind of crumbled as people would be like, well, why did you do it that way? What was about mm. that? Uh, I feel like your construction of that could have been there's better concept behind that and you just like mm-hmm. you felt so good about it and you go out feeling like wow I did a horrible job but the next week when you're coming with a different art project you've taken a lot of those things into consideration mm-hmm. oh what is he gonna say about it what is she gonna say about it how can I make this to be the best representation to carry my original intentions and what my imagination for what this could be mm-hmm. so it thorn in the flesh is like something there in some ways to protect you from certain things correct like, reminding us you know you think about the individuals who were able to get out of the draft because mm-hmm. You know, earlier in the week, they broke their leg doing something. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, there's there's certain things that we just are like, why now, why here? Mm -hmm. But anyways. And in some ways, it keeps us humble. Mm -hmm. So there there is this this, um, danger when things are always well. Get too puffed up. We get puffed up. And we tend to look at self. When things are not going well, we tend to look up and ask God for help. And, and I think that, that perspective of saying, okay, God, this is just a reminder. We're still not in heaven. Yeah. We're still growing. We're still learning. We'll, we're still struggling on planet Earth. And as, as you mentioned, my struggles are going to be very different from your struggles. But we have the same God who knows about all of our struggles. And he's willing to help us. He's grown up with us. He sees he the entire has, picture. He sees it. And unfortunately, the enemy has also seen oh, the yes. entire picture. He so knows. It's back to that fight mm-hmm. between good and evil. That's right. I'm uh, just wrapping up with this mm-hmm. quote from the Ministry of Healing. Mm-hmm. It says, He who reads the hearts of men and knows their characters better than they themselves know them, he sees that some have powers and susceptibilities which, rightly directed, might be used in the advancement of his work. Mm-hmm. In his providence, he brings these purposes persons into different positions and Amen. varied circumstances that they may discover in their character the defects which have been concealed from their no- own knowledge. He gives them opportunity to correct these defects and to fit themselves for his service 
Often he permits the fires of affliction to assail them, that they may be purified. Amen. So, yeah, it's not easy going through some of these difficulties and hardships, mm -hmm. but let's try and keep the end goal in mind. Mm -hmm. And remember that all we have to do at this point is fight this battle to the end. Once this battle is over, we never have to deal with this enemy Amen. again. Amen. Amen. Let's not give up. <laughs> Anything else? I think you, we covered the, the lesson, and, and again, it's an invitation for us to trust God even when we're going through difficult times, and especially when we recognize that maybe it's something we did. Mm. So He's open to helping us resolve it and, and change it and, and by His grace bring something good out of it. Well, that's it. Um, let's pray. Mm -hmm. Eternally, Father, we thank You so much for Your blessings, for Your leading and guiding in our lives. Amen. Yes, we know that some of the biggest trials of our lives are ahead, mm -hmm. but we ask for Your grace and Your mercy to prepare us for those times. That when they hit we might be able to rest in you Amen. and feel your presence as we mm -hmm. traverse those trials. Um, guide and bless our YouTube subscribers here, Amen. as well as those who are just watching this now, and we ask that you would be with them in whatever they're struggling with. Send your spirit to comfort, strengthen, and guide them. And now, as we continue on into the next week, we ask that you would guide and go with us and be near us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for being with us. Yes. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell so that you get notified when these videos go live. And mm. I guess we're headed off to the church now. Or if this video ends, click it. There's going to be another church here or here or somewhere else. <laughs> so um, take care and happy Sabbath.